Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now as I mentioned before also when you we, when, the, when these plants have seeds, so again another subclassification rise up. That is these seeds can either be naked or the seeds can be covered. So what is the basis of classification? The type of seeds produced. So what kind of seeds are getting produced? by this by the plants so based on that the phanerogams are classified into two categories gymnosperms and angiosperms so what are gymnosperms the word gymno it means naked and the word angio means covered the word sperms means nothing but seed so gymnosperms are those which produce naked seeds angiosperms are those which produce covered seeds so these were the two classification of the phanerogams. So let us look at the gymnosperms first. So these are the phanerogams with naked seeds. That means the seeds are not enclosed in anything. The, for example, when we talked about pteridophytes and phanerogams, in pteridophytes also the reproduction happened with the help of spores. So spores were nothing but naked embryos. The embryos were not enclosed in anything. But when we talked about the uh, the phanerogams they reproduce by seeds so seeds were nothing but the embryos which are covered along with the food needed for its initial development so similarly those phanerogams which produce naked seeds that means only the seeds are produced they are known as gymnosperms so these are fruitless plants so there are no fruits in these plants the plants are perennial, evergreen and woody. So normally these plants have a lot of wood. As you can see in these pictures, they are generally quite tall and they are evergreen. That means they remain green throughout the year because many of the plants you would have seen that they shed their leaves in autumn. Right? So autumn is known as the season of shedding leaves. But these plants do not shed their leaves in any season. They are evergreen. So now you might be asking a question to yourself that in gymnosperms the seeds are naked. So that means the seeds are op open, they are not enclosed in anything. So where are the seeds present actually in gymnosperms? Because in case of angiosperms the seeds are enclosed. So where are the seeds enclosed? The seeds are actually enclosed inside the fruits. For example when you eat an apple, have you ever seen that inside the apple you have small black seeds? So those seeds are nothing but the seeds which we are talking about. So when we consider the apple tree, it is an example of angiosperm because the seeds are enclosed inside the fruit. But in case of gymnosperms, it is not like that. We do not have any fruit at all. So these are fruitless plants. So where exactly are the seeds present in case of a gymnosperms? Well, in case of a gymnosperms, the seeds are contained in cones. Now what are cones? Now in gymnosperms you have structures like this as you can see here. These are known as cones. So we have male and female cones in gymnosperm plants. Now generally the male cones are smaller in size and the female cones are larger in size. So let me write down a few points here so that it will be easy for you to remember things. So here the seeds are contained in cones and we have male cones and female cones. So the male cones are little smaller in size, the female cones are little larger in size. So now you understand what are cones, structures like this are present in the gymnosperms. So what is the function of the male cones? The male cones actually produce sperm which is contained in the pollen grains. So the purpose of male cones is to produce sperm which is present in the pollen grains. And what is the function of female cones? The female cones produce eggs which are stored in the ovules now please do not bother yourself by asking questions like what is ovule what is pollen grain where is it exactly because we are not going to st study about the structure of each and every part of the plant right now because that will make things unnecessarily complex so just to give you a rough idea i'm trying to tell this so you have cones like this the la longer cones are the female cones smaller cones are the male cones so the male cones will produce sperm and the female cones will produce eggs now the female cones 
will have some sticky resin like substance that catches the sperm released by the male cones. So the female cones will have some sticky substance which will actually attract the sperm which is produced by the male cone. Right? So once the sperm is attracted by the female cones, so the fertilization will take place. Right? So the female cones will have sticky substance, so it will attract the sperm. Now once it attracts the sperms, fertilization will take place between the sperm and the eggs. So after the fertilization, what happens? The female cone enlarges inside size so the size of the female cone it which was already a little larger than the male cone now the size increases even more and gradually a time comes when the seed drops so here you can see this is so in this picture you can see one cone where the seeds have not dropped yet so it is erect but there is another cone fr from where the seeds have already dropped off so this is a cone from where the seed is already dropped off so it is empty there are no seeds here but this is something which is filled with seeds. So the seeds are still there, right? So you understand it is, it is quite simple. So instead of fruits, we have cones here. So there are male cones, there are female cones. Male cones are smaller, female cones are larger. Male cones will produce sperms, female cones will produce eggs. Female cones will have a sticky substance which will attract the sperm present in the male cones. Now once the sperm comes, sperm and oh, the eggs fertilize and as a result of fertilization the female cones start increasing in size after some time the seeds are dropped off and once the seeds are dropped off how are they dispersed so they are dispersed either by wind or they are carried by animals and then those seeds give rise to a new plant so that is how the reproduction take place in case of a gymnosperm with the help of a naked seed right Okay, so these kind of plants generally have needle shaped leaves and that is why, why the shape of the leaves are in the shape of needle, that be, that's because, and because of the shape of these kind of leaves, they are able to tolerate different types of weather and that is why they are evergreen. So they are need, in the shape of needles and that is why they, all, they are all not seen everywhere. I mean, do you see these kind of trees in your neighborhood unless and until you are not staying in a hilly area? So mostly you see these long trees with needle shaped leaves in hilly areas where the weather is little more cold. So that is why these kind of plants can withstand the cold weather. They are also termed as soft wood. Gymnosperms are also known as soft wood. Examples of gymnosperms are pines, deodar and cycads. So here you can see the long pine trees or the deodar cycads. They are all similar looking trees and they all fall under the category of gymnosperms. Let us talk about some of the economic uses of gymnosperms. They control soil erosion in forests because mostly we find it in areas like the hilly areas or the forest areas. So they help in soil erosion because again they will bind, try to bind the soil and it will prevent the soil from being washed away by water. Some of the economic uses, they help in manufacture of soap, nail polish, perfumes, Food, obviously, it is a source of food for many organisms. Lumber. So what is lumber? It is the wood which we obtain from these kind of plants that is in turn used in making furniture and many other stuffs. Right? So these are some of the economic uses where uh, gymnosperms play a role. So let us now look at angiosperms. Now as the name suggests, angiosperms means their seeds are enclosed inside the fruits. Now most of the plants which we see around us, they are mostly angiosperms. Whether it is your rose plant, the lily plant or the tomato plant or the orange plant, they are all angiosperms. So these are phanerogams with enclosed seeds. So they bear fruits and fruits are the one which actually encloses the seeds. They are flowering plants. So these plants also bear flowers. So all flowering plants which you see, they fall under the category of angiosperms. They have broad leaves, unlike gymnosperms. In case of gymnosperms, they have needle-shaped leaves. But generally angiosperms have broad leaves. 
they are termed as hardwood like the way gymnosperms are termed as softwood and geosperms are known as hardwood why are they called hardwood and why gymnosperms are called softwood because there is a big difference between angiosperms and gymnosperms as far as the vascular system is concerned vascular system is present in both gymnosperms and angiosperms but in case of angiosperms tracheids are present you remember while we were talking about the vascular bundles we talked about the different components of the vascular bundle for example the xylem consists of the xylem parenchyma the xylem fibers similarly phloem consists of the phloem parenchyma the tracheids the phloem fibers right so those were the different components of vascular system so the component called tracheids are present in angiosperms so here tracheids are present and since tracheids are present therefore the vascular system is little better in angiosperms as compared to the gymnosperms and what is the function of tracheids tracheids actually provide a lot of structural support now because of this structural support these angiosperms are known as hardwood hard means something which is very strong so when there is more structural support we can consider them to be more hard and strong and stout that is why these angiosperms are often known as hardwood right so now if you look at the angiosperms they have got all the features in them they have a distinct root they have a distinct stem they have distinct leaves they also have flowers and what is flower flower is not nothing but the reproductive organ so inside the flower we have the ovary i mean the male and the female parts of a plant are present inside the flower right it has a fruit fruit is nothing but the one which contains the seed and seed is the one with the help of which a new plant again comes up correct so in this case uh the angiosperms we have specific reproductive tissues also as well as we also have the seeds so such kind of plants are known as angiosperms so most of the plants which we see around us are angiosperms and these plants are not evergreen that is they shed their leaves every autumn because they have got broad leaves and these kind of leaves cannot withstand all kinds of temperature as a result they shed their leaves every autumn examples of angiosperms you can see so many examples here and many other examples you can see at your own home because all most of the plants which you see around us most of them are angiosperms let us look at some of the uses of angiosperms they are a primary source of food for animals because you would have seen in in, in your near locality that many animals like cows or goats they come and directly feed on plants so these angiosperms are a primary source of food for many animals they provide us oxygen to breathe we all know that we need oxygen to breathe in and what do the plants do plants perform photosynthesis and as in the process of photosynthesis oxygen is liberated so oxygen is a by product of photosynthesis so every time the plant is performing photosynthesis it is releasing oxygen to the atmosphere and it is giving us oxygen to breathe in right some of its economic uses would include again lumber fibers for clothes we also obtain fibers from the cotton plants and they are used for making clothes it is also used for preparing many different kinds of drugs so it is also used for medicinal purpose thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again